I reckon we'll get into the word of the Lord this morning. We're going to turn over to the book of Joel. It's found in the ending books of the Old Testament. It's a small book with about three chapters. Uh, right after the book of Hosea. Hosea, Joel, Amos. The book of Joel. I'll give you a few moments to look that up there. <clears throat> Amen. I want to speak to us this morning about decision making. Making decisions and making choices. Praise the Lord. Everybody found that? All right. Joel chapter 3 and verse 9. Before I begin reading, uh, this chapter uh, is talking about God's judgments against the enemies of his people and his blessings upon the church in the latter portion of the chapter. Verse 9 we'll read, says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Boy, they was getting for, ready for war, wasn't they? Hey, man, that sounds like some, some farm type stuff, doesn't it? Uh, to getting your plow shears, beating them into a, a sword, amen, and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their weakness, wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of of decision. We'll stop reading right there. Praise God if we could. Let's just ask the Lord to bless his word this morning. Father, we come to you and in the name of the Lord to bless this word of God. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to us and, and anoint this morning. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, they were here uh, getting themselves ready for battle. They had a decision to make. Uh, you may be here sitting this morning. If you feel like you're that weak one, you know, you can strengthen yourself and encourage yourself. Uh, you can do that. Uh, a lot of times it's just a mindset. Uh, a story was told of a man that took a couple of weeks out of every year and he went up into the hills and uh, he didn't come down till his two weeks was over. He, uh, he just sat in solitude with the Lord and prayed and, and sought God throughout uh, those period of two weeks of time they would take out of every year just to let God talk to him and shut out the world. And nobody was to reach him, his family, or nobody else, except for maybe if there was a death. Uh, it had to be really important to disturb him because he wanted to get with, along with God and see what God would had to say. And when he'd come down off of that mountain or them hills, wherever he was at, he would be encouraged in God. He would feel like going again. He would have strength from the Lord and would feel like fighting his battles another year through. Amen. What was he doing? He was sharpening his sword, his spiritual sword. He was communing with God and getting alone. And I want to tell you, you may be weak, but if we will, uh, as, as the Sunday school lesson, it was said many times about prayer and uh, speaking with God and, and getting along with the Lord so he can talk to us. Amen. That's where that the weak is made strong. That's where the kitty cat goes in the closet of prayer and comes out of line. Hallelujah. Amen. You can do that. You may be discouraged, 
But I want to tell you what, there's power in the Lord. But there's only one way to get that power, and that's you're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make the right decision. They, they it says here that they were weak, uh, that said that the weak, let the weak say, I am strong. Uh, there was some assembling together that we see in these scriptures. They were getting ready for war because war had come against God's people. And they were making their weapons and they were getting ready to fight the devil. How many of you this morning are getting ready to fight the devil? Amen. We need to be getting ready this Sunday morning to fight the devil throughout this week. Praise God. Amen. And sharpen our sword, sharpen our mind in the word of the Lord and be encouraged today. Praise the Lord. That's why we can't take uh, uh, the appointed times that uh, we come together as God's people to worship God, to, to preach His word. We can't take those times lightly because I want to tell you, you may need the strength this coming week in your life. Amen. That you would receive this morning in the service. Praise God. Amen. Looking at decisions this morning, let's go to another uh, portion of Scripture found in 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. <clears throat> and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Uh, they were called to make a decision. You see, the prophets of Baal, they were so convinced that they had a real God, <clears throat> that their God could come down out of heaven and ignite that sacrifice. But we read that it never happened. They went to the extent of cutting themselves and just radical things. You know what? The devil will drive us many times. If we keep following the, the ways of Satan, he will convince us to do crazy things, won't he? He will. And that, they were doing some crazy things here. You know what, uh, Elijah, but he was a man of God and he was there to show these people who the real God was. He said, how long halt ye between two opinions? You're trying to decide what's real and what's not. Amen. I hope we can this morning know that God is real and know that we need to make the choice for the Lord. You know, but you have to make a decision. You have to. And I, 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 would, I would like to call upon us this morning here in this church. If uh, the world is your God and, and the things of this world is your God, then, then you know what? You're going to have to make a decision. Go follow that. But you know, if God be God, I challenge you to follow Him this morning. Amen. Give your life to Him and follow the Lord. Years ago, it was said... Uh, you know, of Ronald Reagan, you know, back in his early days, whenever you went to buy shoes, you, you didn't go to uh, J.C. Penney's or the, or the Shoe Carnival or something like that to buy a pair of shoes. It, it was a mo lot more uh, entailed in getting a pair of shoes than that. They had what, what was known as a shoe cobbler. You ever heard of that? A shoe cobbler. He was a man that went around and, you know, at his request or at your request, he would make you a pair of shoes to your liking. And uh, it was said of young Reagan, whenever he was little, he had the shoe cobbler asked him, what kind of shoes do you want? Uh, do you want square-toed or do you want round-toed? And uh, he just him hauled around. He couldn't make up his mind what kind of shoes he wanted or what style he wanted. And he, the shoe cobbler said, you know what, get back with me in a couple days, and when you made up your mind, let me know what kind you want. And uh, uh, the man, uh, the shoe cobbler, seen him some day or two later, and he said, young Reagan, you made up your mind yet? And uh, he said, no, I still don't know. And uh, so, the, so the shoe cobbler went ahead and made him a pair of shoes. He made one square and one round. And he uh, gave young Reagan his shoes. And he had one square toe and one round toe. And the moral of the story is, is you don't let someone else make your choices for you. Amen? Because you know what? The shoe cobbler didn't have to live with those choices. It was just his duty to make them. But because young Reagan couldn't decide what he wanted, the shoe cobbler made his decisions. You see, it's a rough thing whenever we let someone else make our decisions. Whenever we just let someone else just do the deciding for us. Amen. Your decisions count. You see the power. There's a lot of power in a decision. 
There's some things I want to look at here about making a decision that we need to understand. You have to know enough before you decide. You have to know enough before you decide. You have to have the power to make the decision. And you have to accept the consequences of your choice. Now let's go back to the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Then in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the Amorites, or in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a choice. I wonder, is there somebody here this morning would like to make that choice? As for me and my house, as for me and my soul this morning, I want to make the choice to serve God and to serve Him only. Amen. There is a choice that you, my friend, have to make. And there is a, there is a uh, consequence that we'll have to uh, reap in that choice, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Amen. We're not, we're not far into the year of 2019. I don't know how many of us made New Year's resolutions. Anybody? Maybe, maybe probably, uh, you know, sometimes we start out on a diet and, and we, uh, lose track of it by February about this time. Uh, uh, we start out strong sometimes, start out with good resolutions, but you know, we, we fail along the way sometimes, but sometimes not. Amen. Encourage, I want to encourage you this morning to stick with the decision that you made if you made a good one. Amen. If you made a, a decision to serve the Lord in your life, to give your uh, life and consecrate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, stick with that decision. Amen. Because there's power in that decision. I, I just think of those two thieves that were hanging on the cross. One had a, had a bad spirit about himself and said, if you be the Christ, come down from there and save us. Amen. He was, he was just putting all his faults on Jesus. But the other one said, uh, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you know what? Because of that decision, because of that humble decision that that man made, uh, the Lord said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Amen. Do we see the power of a decision there in that scenario that, that was played out when Jesus was on the cross? Amen. It's such a simple thing. And I'll remind you that some of your simplest decision can impact your life forever. Amen. Some of the simplest things can impact your life forever. Amen. Lord, help me this morning to make the right decision. Anybody else with me this morning? It's so easy to make the wrong decision. It's so easy to slip up. You know why? Because we have an adversary that is walking about as a roaring lion seeking to devour my soul. He's seeking to trip old Tommy Farrell up. He's seeking to put a stumbling block in my way. But you know what? I want to kick the stumbling block out of the way by the power of God. God. Amen. And I know that we will make the right decision whenever we're seeking God. Now that's a point I want us to listen to this morning. Amen. Young people, old people, middle-aged people, all of us here this morning. Amen. You have decisions to make and every decision counts. Is there anybody here this morning? You don't have to answer openly, but is there anybody that believes that you have decisions that that don't matter when it comes to serving God, when it comes to your life. Now, there's, there's simple decisions as of whether you'll sit on the couch or whether you'll sit on the, the recliner really doesn't matter. That's not the kind of the decisions that I'm talking about this morning. I'm not talking about where you decided to wear red or you decide to wear pink or blue. That's not the decision I'm discussing. I'm talking about the decisions of our life that make an impact 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you, are you seeking God through your decisions? Amen. I, I like what the brother asked for this morning about prayer, that welding. Amen. You know what? Amen. What? That's an impact. That's a life impact. Hope you don't mind me using it for illustration. That's an impact on your life, whether you'll make money or not. Amen. You 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 want to pass? I, I too there was one there was there one day where I was taking those tests. Remember those fire department tests we was taking that time. Uh, we stayed up studying half the night, hoping that we would pass those tests. Well, why? Because it was our future. It was our uh, our welfare for a little while. We was going to make money with that. It meant something. Amen. So you know what? Those decisions to study up, uh, to make sure we knew what we were supposed to know, to pass that test would impact our life uh, for a good while. I don't know what, what would have been the course if we wouldn't have uh, went there. I don't know. But uh, you know what? Our decisions impact our life. Understand that. Your decisions impact everything. And whether we decide to uh, involve ourselves in the work of God, I want to tell you what, that's the most important decision you'll ever make. Whether to involve your family in the house of God and involve your family in the things of God, that's the most important th decision you will ever make. Amen. And whenever we take those decisions lightly and we think they don't matter and, you know, we can just skip around here and there and, you know, and somehow or another, we're just going to kick the ball down the road and it's going to end up in the go. Are you living like that this morning? I hope you're not. Amen. We can't just kick the ball and think that it's just going to land in the go. But there has to be some direction. There has to be some strategy. Come on, let's get down here and really understand what this decision making is all about. Let's strategize. What do you mean, strategize? I thought I'd just give my heart to the Lord and that was it. You're mistaken, my friend. Have you ever had anything in life that, that you just... If you want a new truck, Brother James, you just went and got a new truck and that was it? No, they give you a payment book with it, didn't you? Which, man, like you, you probably wrote a check for it. I mean, you know, I don't know. But, you know, some of us others, we have to make payments. You know? And we had, once we got that thing, that new addition to our life, there was some paying that we had to do. So we had to sit down and count the costs. We had to strategize. We have to make sure to show up for work because I need that money at the end of the month to pay my truck payment. Right. Whenever we're serving God, how many of you know that we need to do some strategizing? We need to sit down. We need to count the cost. We need to count the cost of serving this world. And not serving the Lord. We need to understand where that not involving ourselves in the work of God will lead us. Not involving ourselves in prayer with God so that He can help us make the right decision. Where will that ultimately lead our life? You see, there's some things for us to think about. Amen. Yes, I know there, there's probably many that preach you all oh, just 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 give it to God and he'll take care of the rest of it. Amen. I want to tell you, God takes care of a lot of things. He does. But I want to tell you what uh, the Bible also says, if any be ignorant, let him be ignorant. God don't expect his children and does not wish for his children to be ignorant. I'm mean, ignorant means not knowing. No understanding. We are to understand God's Word. We're to follow God's Word so that we can be prosperous, so it'll work out right. Amen. Whenever we uh, follow the words of the Lord, <clears throat> whenever we apply the Scriptures to our life, whenever we apply uh, God's presence to our life, I want to tell you what, it'll make you walk on. Amen. It'll make you live higher. It'll make God's will be done in your life. It don't just happen is what I'm saying. There are some things that has to be done. Praise the Lord. Amen. The, 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 there's, the church world is full of people that think that it's just going to happen. Amen. 
And I'm going to tell you when it's going to happen. It's going to happen whenever you pull up them spiritual work boots. Amen. And get them on. Praise the Lord. And realize that you're in the battle of your life. Amen. And realize that there is a devil that's after your soul. Praise God. And you grab the word of God out. Amen. And you begin to soak into it like Brother Don was this morning. Amen. Many of you others. Praise the Lord. This is how. Amen. That we become. Uh, amen. And, and where we a place where we need to be in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, by that decisions, by our decisions. Praise the Lord. Uh, it will end us up in a better place if we'll make the right ones. Amen. The greatest power that has been given into the hands of man is the power to make decisions for himself. Joshua challenged the children of Israel to make the decision as uh, to whom they would serve. They were challenged to make that decision. This was after they had entered into the promised land. And you know what? Joshua, he declared openly his choice. You know what? We too have the power to come and go to make friends or enemies. Choose good and evil, obey or disobey, change our ways or to remain the same. We choose to handle our finances or ignore them. We can build relationships or we can terminate relationships. We can live or die. And the list goes on and on. The choice is ours. It was said of someone that we make over 2,500 decisions in an average day. I got thinking about that as I was studying this. Some important, some are not. Can you imagine that you make 2,500 decisions in a day's time? Think about it. You lay in there, you make the decision to get out of the bed or not. You make the decision to go brush your teeth. You make the decision to go... Fix you a pot of coffee. You make a decision to put your clothes on. I don't know. So you have some important, some are not. But life is full of decisions. And throughout your day, whenever you get past all the little decisions, you have to make a decision to go to work. You have to make a decision to do something right. You have to make good choices. Praise the Lord. We have to make decisions. We are so impacted with decision making that many have developed a fear of making decisions as, as to not to make uh, mistakes. They get scared of that. Some are so afraid of making mistakes that they believe that if they hide from them that those decisions will just go away, that they'll just, uh, you know, disappear. That's not true. We can't live that way. Many times no decision is a decision. We got to be careful of that. Right. Remember, decisions are more than what you say. They are what you do. Amen. You hear me this morning? Decisions are more than what you say. They are what you do. Amen. Lord, help me, God, to do it. Not to just say. Not just say, Lord, I'm going to be there. I'm going to show up. God, not to just, not to just say I'm going to serve you, but really serve you. Praise the Lord. I wonder what the epitaph of, of Joshua would be today. If we read where he, he mildly proclaimed that he wanted to serve God, that he wanted to choose God, and then he fell away. My help us, Lord. Decisions are created by the influences that are around you, your culture, your training, your beliefs, your family, your friends. Amen. Then what's the basis of your decisions? Is it what others think? What God thinks? What's the basis of those decisions? What is right? What is wrong? But it doesn't matter what they are. Those decisions are our responsibility. I have to make those decisions, and then I have to live with those decisions. Nothing hardly ever is ever accomplished without clear decisions. See, someone made a decision to uh, establish Tatum back some years and years ago. Someone made a decision to establish companies, restaurants, businesses. You might have made a decision to build your house. Someone start with a decision, my dad, to build, a, build this church. Because of that decision, we're able to sit here in this church today. You see the impact and the power of a decision? 
Amen. The decision to serve the Lord and his family is why probably that I'm here this morning. Our decisions mean a lot. God has given the power of decision in your hands. Amen. Let's look at that power very carefully and treat that power of decision very carefully. And we have the freedom of choice. That is our God-given right. It goes, goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Whenever he gave Adam and Eve that choice to make their choices, he gave man freedom of choice. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, he says, choose life. <laughs> choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. He's telling us there are blessings, there are cursings, there's evil, there's bad. But choose life. God says, that's what I want you to choose. That you and your seed may live. You and your offspring may live. You and your children may live. Amen. How many of you know this morning, that's why I'm here. I want to serve God because I want to live. It brings life to my life. It brings peace to my soul. Amen. Whenever I can get caught up in the presence of God. Whenever I can involve God in my life. Whenever He stays involved in my life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Decisions. Decisions. The many they are. Hey, we get tired of decisions, don't we? We just wish somebody else could make decisions, but we, we can't do that. We have to make that decisions. Decisions are like, you know, that big old rudder on a ship. You have you go down to the ocean, you see them massive ships. But you know what? That little rudder ain't near as massive as that ship is. But yet that rudder is what steers the ship. It's what guides the ship. And then you go up into the wheelhouse. And then it could be just a small little remote nowadays could be a little nothing fit in the palm of your hand to steer that big old massive ship. Amen. That's what decisions are like. They steer this massive life that we are walking through. Amen. I hope you're making the decision to serve the Lord. Praise God. Amen. The decisions that you make establish the directions for your life. You see, King Saul, we read in the Bible where he made some very bad decisions. And you know what? It set the whole course of his life. Amen. Whenever Saul, from that time on, he was troubled by an evil spirit that required Remember back where we read about how David would have to play for King Saul? He'd play his harp. He'd play the music to calm him down. I mean, a lot of times that's all we see is David playing the music. But why did he have to play the music? Saul's life was so bad. His mind was so distorted that he needed something to calm him down. So he had David come in there and play for him. Amen. He, what a mess can get in because of bad decisions that we make. Don't take your decisions lightly. I know it seems like you're hearing the word decision over and over and over this morning. But I hope you do. I hope it's ringing in your ears. God, help me, Lord, to make the right decision. Yes. We pray that because we understand the consequences of our decision. Hallelujah. Joshua established the future of his family in his decision. Saul established the future or his family in his decision. So did David. Amen. What are we after this morning? Are we after to make a good decision? Hallelujah. David his decision to serve the Lord established rulership in Israel. What was the bad decision that David made? 
Whenever he decided to have an adulterous affair with Bathsheba, he made a bad decision, didn't he? And it cost him. It cost David. That was not for free. Trust me. Amen. But you know what we read? I thank God for the opportunity that David had to get over his bad decision. That's the kind of God that we do serve. But it did not delete David having to pay for his bad decision. How many days and nights do we think that David cried and wept because of his bad decision? How many of us this morning has cried and wept and been so sorrowful in our heart because of some bad decision we've made? Anybody else besides me wish you could just go back to some instances in your life and just delete it out? <laughs> just dial back time for a few moments and say, oh, let me redo that. You ever said something that which you wish you, right after you said it, you just reach out and grab those words and stuff them back in there? We can't do it, can we? Once they're gone, once them words out there is done, the damage is done. We, we regret that we made that decision to say that or to do that. Amen. Pay attention to all of your decisions. Pay attention to them. Don't take your decisions lightly. Amen. You are responsible for your decisions. We, we live in a world today where that <clears throat> in our court system, what's the point of it? We're trying to make people become and be responsible before the, uh, for the mistakes that they made. We're trying to find out the truth. Then they have to pay for those mistakes. God recognizes until a man takes responsibility for his actions, he can't be helped. We can't be helped until we take responsibility for our decisions. We stop blaming others. We quit saying it's somebody else's fault. We quit saying it's because of the way I was raised. It's because of this. It's because of that. It's because of what. You know what? If you would just stop in those, that train of thought right in this moment. And we realize that it's nobody else's problem. You are your own person. And you are going to stand before God one day. Amen. It don't matter who the devil used to get you to where you are today. It's my responsibility to make a wise and confident choice in God to know that he can help me to turn it around. You know what? I've had people do me wrong in this life. Anybody else? Probably everybody's hand be raised on that. And we've had people do us wrong. Amen. But we don't live the rest of our life. And get all trapped up in, because of somebody else and say, I can't move forward because of them. I'm going to tell you what, your life is yours. And you have the choice to give it to God and live for Him. Amen. No one else can make you do it. You have to choose. Saul chose disobedience and he lost the kingdom. David chose adultery and suffered consequences and immorality in his family. We are responsible for our decision. Society says, how can a loving God condemn a man to hell? But God says that a man condemns himself to hell. God provides a way out. He has provided a way out. Praise the Lord. He said in 1 John 1 and 9, I quote it many times, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Glory to God. I'm glad God can cleanse me from yesterday's sins. He can cleanse me from my past. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God steps in and he gives forgiveness and redemption for our bad choices if we would but come to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many of you want to come to God this morning? How many of you would like to pray, Lord, help me in my decision making this week. Help me to make right the choice right choices you know what the bible even covers that you know that line whenever we say that you know i'm an ignorant man I, I don't know i don't understand you know what the bible says in the james if any be ignorant uh you know what uh let him come or if he, if he when he needs wisdom i'm getting the scriptures twisted up here but if you need wisdom what does he say let him ask for it for he gives it liberally so we can ask God for wisdom. 
We can ask God for direction. And God will direct us. Praise the Lord. Why do you think David was so infatuated with God's law? Read the book of Psalms. David loved the law of God. Yes, we read it. We just spoke about his problems. But David had a side of him. God, I want to get past this problem. I want to overcome this difficulty in my life. David was making a choice there in his life. He was making a choice. I want God. I want God. Joshua made a choice. I want God. Abraham made a choice to do what God said to do. I wonder how many of us would let our own son up the hill, up a mountain, and we've been willing to sacrifice him. Would we have turned on God? But Abraham made a choice, and it come out good. That was a radical deal, wasn't it? To kill your own son. But yet God came through. You see, we can always trust God. We can always trust the Lord in our decision making. Whenever God speaks to us and God opens that door, I can tell you, my friend, if God opens that door and God shows you, amen, it will come out right. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's power in decision. Let's be sure to make the right decisions. Amen. Just felt like speaking on that this morning. Amen. If that's you this morning and you're in the, the battle of your life and you need to make some good decisions. Amen. I want to tell you what. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning because he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. Let's all stand this morning. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We pray. Please meet us around these altars. God. In your name we ask. Amen. Amen. I want to open these altars up. Amen. If you're new here this morning, you can come and kneel down these altars. Just you and God. You can pray and seek the Lord.